Greetings again, friends. Well, I am glad to be back with you today. I'm going to be talking about a theme today that will be a contrast for you. Before we get back into the war, I want to discuss peace. Now, being at peace is something that we all desire. In fact, there's war because there's no peace. Those are, those are contrary words. Those are, those are contrasting words. You either seem to have war or peace. You, you want peace because things are just more relaxing, less stressful when there's peace. I mean, most of us don't like all the conflict. Most of us don't like all the war. I, I hope you're watching the videos about, about uh, why we have war, like I, like I showed you. Uh, I hope you're watching the, the videos that are talking about this tribulation and the judgment that's coming and the war of wars that's coming. Not that I just want to talk about it. It's something you need to know about. But we need to know more about peace. We need to know more about the Prince of Peace. And as I think about this and get back into that discussion of the war that comes before the peace, and in thinking about what I said before in that video about war, about how it's like war and peace, like the book has been written, I thought peace would be a good theme to talk about today. Now, I look at Scripture and I think of one thing when I think of peace. I think of the Prince of Peace. And we have that in Isaiah 9, 6. It is a verse often used at Christmas time, but it is a verse really in context that, that really deals with not just Jesus coming the first time, but Him coming the second time. And really, uh, as I read this and go into it a bit, you'll see how it ties into where we're headed in Revelation chapter 19. But I just want to share this with you today because Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, that's in the kingdom, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now this is when he reigns on the earth and he will have peace on the earth when man couldn't accomplish it, accomplish it with all the wars that have gone on all through history, culminating in that war and that battle of Armageddon as Jesus returns. Well, we'll talk about that in more detail about the peace, but here in Isaiah 9, 6, he is called the Prince of Peace. And verse 7 there says, Of the increase of His government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over His kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You can rest assured, friend, that there will be peace and it will be a lasting peace. It won't be a fleeting peace as there is in the Middle East with all of the conflict that's existed there and even does this very day. It won't be peace that some treaty comes up with to make, even though there are moments of peace. It won't be a peace like in the Pax Romana that there was in the Roman Empire when Jesus was actually born the first time. As Galatians 4.4 4 says, it was the fullness of time that God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. All right, so God used that time of peace to come the first time, but the next time he comes, it's going to be him, the Prince of Peace, that generates that peace that will last forever. 
But when you're in conflict, when you're in tragedy, when you're in the consequences of this fallen world, you sometimes just wonder, when is it going to end? When is there going to be peace? Now, I have been through quite a bit in my life, particularly since that Virginia Tech tragedy on 4 1607. And part of that was involved in court as I was fighting in court to be able to see my children. But I wrote about this as I was reflecting, finding myself at lunch, uh, sitting there and thinking about where I was and what I was there for. And this was written in the middle of things happening on 7.30.09. I wrote this article called Pondering Peace. So I'll just read it and talk about it today as this comes up. In the process of pursuing peace with all through my personal tragedy, I found myself yesterday sitting in a McDonald's off Peace Street, in Raleigh, North Carolina, right by Broughton High School, where President Obama had just spoken. People and police were roaming everywhere, and security was tight. As I enjoyed my lunch, noting all of the activity outside, I couldn't help but think further about the elusiveness of peace in our country and in the world. I thought about the pursuit of peace at Virginia Tech through the recently established Center for Peace Studies and Violence Protect Prevention located in Norris Hall, where the majority of people were killed on 4 1607. I thought about the long standing desire for peace in war regions around the world and particularly in the often volatile Middle East. I thought about the typical goal of world peace echoed by nearly every beauty contestant and media celebrity. I pondered the only way personal peace can be realized. Peace is a state of tranquility or quiet. It is the opposite of discord and violence. When you have peace, you have structure, order, and a state of calmness. Does that describe our world? Does this describe your life? Peace is desirable because discord and conflict causes stress and division. Conflict ruins relationships. Peace is elusive when we push for our own way. When we fail to unify diversity, that's my top 10 lesson number eight, love one another, that's my top 10 lesson number five, and serve one another, that's my top 10 lesson number seven, we fail to realize peace. Those top 10 lessons can be seen on my website, and eventually I will focus on each in some video presentation of the top 10 lessons to learn but uh, they all have come through what God has allowed me to experience and then teach me, and I want to help teach you this too. I say here, conflict cannot be completely avoided because people are different and we each have a variety of goals and interests. Conflict does not have to lead to broken relationships or destruction of property. Too often we either ignore a problem or we fight against it. I've often addressed these issues in the various blogs on my website. And I ask people to consider the 769 blog, Ignorance is No Excuse. Or even the 62009 blog, Apologizing Forgiveness and Reconciliation. I've dealt with this in uh, some videos, too, with apologizing, which you should go back and see. 
Peacemaking, though, peacemaking is different and properly deals with conflict. And I have that video on conflict resolution. You should, you should think about these things and watch those things to learn these principles. You can either fake peace, break peace, or make peace. It takes a lot of work to make peace, yet the rewards are well worth it. Jesus said in 1 Peter 3, or excuse me, in Matthew 5, 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And Peter pronounced in 1 Peter 3, 11, in that second part of that verse, seek peace and pursue it. The Apostle Paul added, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. And that's in Romans 12, 18. Making peace is our responsibility and a requirement for those desiring to please God. Friend, you must first be at personal peace before you can make peace with others. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6, as I referenced. He made peace possible through His death on the cross. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell, and by Him to reconcile all things to Himself. By Him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of His cross. Colossians 1:19 to 20 the only way for Genetech, America, the world, or you, dear reader and watcher, can have peace is to acknowledge and accept the living Jesus Christ and His way. Loving His Word brings great peace. And that's Psalm 119, 165 which says, Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing will cause them to stumble. Prioritizing Him will give you perfect peace. And that's Isaiah 26, 3, which the Lord promises that He will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Him because He trusts in Him. So, friend, there's so much that you can learn from God's Word about peace. And you can have peace yourself and not the war and conflict that often is out there if you seek peace and work to make peace and not fake peace or break peace. Like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell to be ready as we get into what happens when you don't have peace and have war as Revelation tells us will happen.